Long before Columbine stained the papers with the sludge of mayhem and destruction, there was another school shooting. As a matter of fact, there was a bunch of school shootings before Columbine. The one I'm talking about today took place in Ottawa, Canada, 1975. It was four days before Halloween that 18 years old Robert murdered two people. What interested me about Robert is that he isn't just a school shooter, he's also a sexual sadist, a sex killer. So let's turn back time, because the events that unfolded on that day in the fall of 1975 didn't just burst into existence. Everything has its root. It's sort of weird that many sexually motivated killers grow up with a big female presence in the home, isn't it? Robert Pauline apparently had a fairly ordinary upbringing. His father was a former pilot with the Royal Canadian Air Force, and his mother was a nurse. He had three siblings, two older sisters and one younger sister, and he was always seen as kind of a mellow kid. He was never really upset or showed any outward signs of violence, anger or hatred, no. Robert Pauline was a good boy. He attended church regularly with his family and he always did good on the jobs he carried throughout his short life. He had several jobs, he had been a newspaper deliverer and he also worked in a pizza shop, something he has in common with one of the Columbine shooters, Eric Harris. But Roman had aspirations. He aspired to be in the military. Robert must have been pretty bummed out when he found out that his application for the Canadian military was rejected, but he had more options. He instead joined a Canadian militia group called the Cameron Highlanders. There was no official authorization for the special commando training he received on the side though. It was an odd group. The commander of the militia group would be asked why he chose such timid looking young boys and he answered that he wanted to turn people that didn't look like killers into killers. According to tentmates to Robert Paulin, their trainer was a dangerous and fanatical man. He would get wild eyed and excited at the prospect of war. We know that Robert Paulin turned out quite bad, being a murderer and all. But another thing to note about the militia group is that another member of the group would stab a 58 year old woman to death less than two years after the school shooting at St. Pius X High. He had stabbed her 36 fucking times. When Robert was home he was the mellow young boy everyone knew. But he was getting more and more addicted to the thoughts and compulsions that stemmed from his head and reached all the way to his genitals. He had a lot of porn, hardcore stuff. And he also had a vibrator and a blow up sex doll. But of course all of those things wasn't really weird in and of themselves, but it was the list of names and fantasies he had written down that was. He had written the names of several young girls, girls he was obsessed with. There were 18 names in total and these 18 girls had all gotten obscene and bizarre phone calls. All the phone calls had ended after October 27th, 1975, the day of the school shooting. 
He also had a wish, or rather, an obsession with rape. He wanted to rape women, and he wrote down that he would do it wearing a balaclava. Strangely enough, several women around the apartment complex where Robert lived had said that a stranger wearing a balaclava had tried to assault them, although he was never successful. The phone calls and the attempted rapes was never proven to have been done by Robert Paulin, but you know, that's technicalities. And it feels a little too specific to be coincidence. By the time October 27th rolled around the corner, Robert had stacked quite a collection of porn, 250 magazines in total, and he also had four pairs of handcuffs. He was getting deep into it. Robert Paulin, 18 years old, had been depressed for a long time. He desperately wanted to have sex with a woman and he had suicidal thoughts. Unfortunately though, he didn't just kill himself when the time came. He had written that he wouldn't kill himself before he had lost his virginity. He also wrote about his hatred for his parents wishing to burn the house down with them inside of it. So, his plans were to have sex with a girl, burn his house down and then kill himself. But things rarely go according to plan. Kim Radot was a 17 year old girl, an acquaintance of Robert Paulin. On the morning of October 27, 1975, Robert lured the young girl into the basement of his family home once inside, he threw himself over her, held her down, and handcuffed her to his bed. Once her hands had been locked in, he raped her. And once he had raped her, he stabbed her. Several times. After he had raped and murdered the young girl, he went upstairs. He unwrapped the sandwich his mother had prepared for him, and he sat down eating his sandwich in front of the TV as if nothing had happened. Then he set fire to the basement. He was of course trying to burn the house down, but unfortunately for him, the fire never went past the basement. Then he grabbed his sawed-off shotgun, and he strapped the bloody knife he had used to his chest, and made his way to St. Pius X High School. The students were sitting in the classroom just like any other day. Then someone burst into the classroom. It was Robert Paulin. He had a distant look in his eyes, just like so many mass murderers do. Although, according to a couple of witnesses that day, he had a grin that stretched from ear to ear on his face. The shooting ended just as quickly as it had began. Robert burst into the room and fired four shots with his sawed-off shotgun. Only one person died in the shooting, that was Mark Hoff, 18 years old. Other than him, six people were wounded. After the sudden flare of death and mayhem, Robert Paulin walked into the hallway where he blew his fucking brains out. But there is some mystery around the sequence of events. Police reported early on that there had been two shooters, and they had two suspects, something that can be waved off as miscommunication or something like that. But what can't be waved off is the evidence on the crime scene. Where Robert was found, his shotgun had a live round in the chamber, something that was impossible if he had shot himself. The only way he could have died would have been if someone else shot him with another gun. So what the fuck happened? Is this a myth? A lie? A conspiracy? In the end, it doesn't really matter, does it? Robert Paulin was a killer. He murdered two people, and whether he killed himself or was killed by someone else is... After all, unimportant. I know there was reports of two shooters, but the shooting only occurred in one classroom, and the only perpetrator in that classroom was Robert Paulin. It's a fucking rabbit hole, but just think of it like this. If there was two shooters that day, one of them raped and murdered a young woman and shot a young man to death, and the other shot a man that had murdered two innocent people to death. Or maybe... The crime scene reports just aren't true, and he simply blew his brains out. Either way, he's dead. 
So I just wanted to mention that I will have more big projects like the one I did about the Golden State Killer coming down the line. I'm gonna do these normal shorter videos in between and then once in a while I'll drop a fat one. I'm already thinking about what my next big video is going to be about and if you're still watching I'm actually gonna tell you right now. The next big one is going to be about H. H. Holmes, but not the normal story we've all heard. It's going to be the true story behind H. H. Holmes. Trust me, it's nothing like what you've been told. Now, when it's time for me to start writing, editing and preparing for it, you'll know, because just as I usually do, I'll drop a teaser. If the teaser is titled Coming Next, followed by a Roman number, it means that it's just a normal video, something that's usually between 10 to 30 minutes long, but if it has a specific name, like, for example, the truth behind H.H. H. Holmes' teaser, it means that a big one is coming. Just wanted to let you know that. I know this week's episode was short, but I needed a little break after the 1 hour 40 minutes monster I just released. I'll see you in a couple of days when I drop the teaser for the next episode of Ages of Murder. Mm -hmm.